right, welcome to chapter two. Um, this is on quadratic equations. Objective, students will be able to solve simple quadratic equations. Okay, um, I wrote some step-by-step -step directions here. I'm gonna kind of go through those as I go through the example problems. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, example number one, we have this equation here and we're supposed to solve for x. So it says you can start by getting the part that is in the parentheses and raised to the power of two all by itself. That's this part. So I want this on the other side of the equation. So that just means I'm going to add 81 to both sides. If I do that, I get x, don't know why I wrote an 8, x plus 4 squared equals 81. All right, the next thing says now take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus minus. This is important now. In order to undo a square, when it's only a square on one side of the equation, we can just take the square root. Ignore my little scribble here, I, don't, I just messed up. And take the square root here. So on the left, this is just gonna leave us with x plus four because the square root and the square are opposites of each other, so they cancel each other out. So we just have x plus four. On the right, we have the square root of 81, which is nine, but it's not just nine, it's plus or minus nine, okay? That's what I mean by don't forget the plus or minus. All right, so now we're almost done. We just need to get the x all by itself. Um, there's a couple different ways you can do this, but I think the easiest is for us to just go ahead and subtract four from each side. Leave the plus or minus nine there, and we'll, I'll show you what we're gonna do um, in a little bit to, to simplify this. So first, just subtract four from both sides. Okay, what are we left with? Well, we're left with x equals negative four plus or minus nine. Now, what does that mean? That means that there's actually two answers, that we have a negative four plus nine and a negative four minus nine. So let's just write that out. We have x equals negative four plus nine. And over here, we have an x equals negative four minus nine. Well, negative four plus nine would be positive five. So that's one of my solutions, is that x equals five. Negative 4 minus 9 would be x equals negative 13. So that's the other solution. There's always two solutions with quadratics because of this guy right here. Because whenever you take the square root of a number, there's two possibilities. So I could plug in a 5 to this equation and solve it, or I could plug in a um, negative 13 and it would solve this equation. And um, just we'll talk about this more later, but really what this is, this is a... Um, it's a quadratic, so when you graph it, and we're going to get to graphing later, don't worry, you don't have to do it now, but when you graph it, it's going to look something like, something like this. And what we just did by finding the zeros, or the roots, 5 and 13, is 5 and negative 13, is we found these points right here where it crosses the y equals 0 line, or the x-axis. So for this one, this would be at um, negative 13, and this would be at five. We just found those points, that's what this is. So, don't worry too much about that, I'm just giving you a visual understanding of what it means to, to solve for the zeros of a, of a quadratic equation. So, just remember the steps. Um, try this next one on your own. I'm gonna put my work up there in just a little bit, but just remember the steps here, one, two, three, solve it out, and then um, after you pause the video and do that, you can check back in a little bit to uh, check your work. Okay, so first thing I did is I added 25, I got x minus three squared equals 25, I took the square root of both sides, this gave me x minus three equals plus or minus five, because those are both square roots of 25. Added three to both sides, and I got x equals three plus five, and x equals three minus five, so that's eight and negative two. So those are my solutions, my roots, my zeros, whatever you want to call them. There's lots of different names for them. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's move on to this next part. It says, at which x values of the graph of y equal f intersect the x-axis? Remember, a graph intersects the x-axis when y or f of x equals zero. By the way, this, this f of x is just another way of saying y. That's all it is. We'll talk more about that later as well. But look, this is what I was talking about before. All we're doing, we're really doing the exact same thing, okay? We're finding when the graph is equal to zero, when it's right on this line. So all that means is on this problem down here, in the f of x, or the y value, 
remember f of x is just another way of saying you could literally cross this out and just put a y. It's the exact same thing. So we're solving when y or f of x equals 0. So the very first thing we're going to do is just plug a 0 in for the y value or the f of x value. And then we have the exact same type of equation as we had before. Right? We had some quadratic function equals 0. And look, we have some quadratic function equals 0. So we're just doing the same thing, um, following the same steps as up here. It's just the directions um, written a little bit in a, in a way just to try and trick you. Okay, But all we're doing is plugging in a 0 there and, and solving. It's the exact same math as before. So um, let's do that one real quick. Now that I've plugged in a 0, again, I'm just going to get the 49 on the other side by adding 49 to both sides. Because remember, I'm trying to get this part all by itself. I have to get this part all by itself. So I get 49 equals x plus 1 squared. Take the square root of both sides. The square root of 49 is plus or minus 7. And then on the right side, we just have x plus 1. Because a square root and a square are opposite functions of each other. So they cancel each other out. Now. We're going to subtract 1 from both sides, which means that I'm going to write the x on the left side. x equals negative 1 plus or minus 7. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, negative 1 plus 7 would be 6, and negative 1 minus 7 would be negative 8. So there's our two solutions. Just like we did in the problems before, not much has changed. All that's changed is the way that we're talking about the functions or the, the problems. We're saying that it's when f of x equals 0. So here's practice number two. Same idea. Remember the thing you're going to do first is just replace f of x with a 0. Go ahead and solve it. Um, I pause the video and check back with me in just a second. See if you did it correct. Okay, so I replaced f of x with 0. I got x minus 0 equals x minus 4 squared minus 36. I added 36 to both sides, just took the square root of both sides. I got plus or minus 6 equals x minus 4. Added 4 to both sides, I got 4 plus 6. 4 minus 6, which is 4 plus 6 is 10. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. So there we go, and we're done. So all we're doing, guys, is we're just solving the equations, right? So um, make sure that you are getting this part by itself first. If you don't do that, this is going to be a really hard problem to do. So make sure you follow the steps in these orders and are in this order and you should have no problem. Also, I've noticed a lot of students are watching my videos without actually listening to them. So if that's you, I'm hoping that you'll um, be you'll pay attention to what I'm about to tell you because this is how you're going to get full credit for this assignment. I want you to put a smiley face at the bottom of your page. The bottom of your notes, put a little smiley face. That just shows me that you actually listened to this video instead of just um, copying down what you saw. All right, see you guys in class.